Okay, in this video I wanted to give a very quick overview of the different functions you can use to solve equations in Mathematica. And I'll try to go through these three functions here, the solve, find root and reduce. So let's look at the solve function first. So I got a few equations here, just three equations, and let's see how we can solve them. The solve function in Mathematica is to solve equations, the function name is solve and starts with an uppercase letter like most functions in Mathematica. Open a square bracket and then just type the equation in as it is. So I got 3x equals 15 and equals has to be typed as a double equal sign. Okay, so I got double equal 15, close the bracket and then shift and enter. Okay, so that tells me that x is equal to 5 as you'd expect. Now in this case, I haven't actually said what the variable is. So I just said 3x equals 5, and Mathematica has just assumed, uh, since x is the only variable, Mathematica will just assume that that's what you want to solve for. If you want to explicitly state what the variable is, what you want to solve it for, the way to give that is to say 3x equals 15, comma x, and then shift and enter. Okay, and you can use the same function to solve lots of different types of equations so it doesn't so if you want to solve a quadratic still the same function so let me just copy this one down okay so let's say I want to solve this second equation up there so 3x squared sorry x squared so I've got x squared minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0 Okay, and I'm, again, I'll just leave this x in there. And in this case, since there are two solutions, you know, quadra quadratic equation, you usually get two solutions. So it tells me that x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 3 are both solutions of this quadratic equation. And I've also got this second one here. And now this equation here, x squared plus x plus uh, 1 equals 0. Now, we know that has no real solutions because if you draw the graph of this, x squared plus x plus 1, it wouldn't cross the x-axis. So there are no real solutions to this equation. But still, if you were to run it, and let me say n, okay. Okay, the, the, putting two slashes and n, what that does is it gives the answer in a numerical form. So the answer in numerical form is this one here, and you can see it has given complex solutions. So if your equation has complex solutions, Mathematica will give them if you use the solve function. Okay, so let's say I want to do something like this. Let's say I want to solve ax squared plus bx. So you can have your equation in terms of other variables. So I have ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. In this case, you have to say what your what variable you're solving for. If you don't, Mathematica will just assume a variable. So in this case, it just tells me that c is equal to minus bx minus ax squared. So it has just solved for c in this case. But what I want to do is to solve for x. So I give comma x, and that tells me that x is equal to these two numbers here. And we know if you solve this, this is the quadratic formula, minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And you can use the same function to solve simultaneous equations as well. So here I have two simultaneous equations, 3x plus 2y equals 15, and 3x minus 3y is equal to 12. And you use the same function. So you have solve, open bracket. And since we have two equations, you got to put the two equations inside braces. So open a curly bracket, type in the first equation. So 3x plus 2y. And equals again has to be a double equal sign. Plus 2y equals 15. And comma, and then give the second equation. So the first equation, comma, the second one. So 3x minus 3y is equal to 12. Okay, and since the, okay, close that curly bracket and then the square bracket to close the solve function. And since I want the answers in numerical form, I'll do that, I don't want fractions. 
So it tells me that x equals 4.6 and y equals 0 0.6. Since there are only two equations and there are exactly two unknowns, you don't need to specify what the variables are. But let's say maybe I had something like say 3ax and let's say I had a 3by over here. And let's say a and b are constant. So in this case, if you want to solve for x and y, you need to state that explicitly. So I have the two equations inside the bracket there. So I'll say comma, open open another curly bracket, and then give in the variables x comma y, and that will solve it for x and y. So it tells you that x and y I equal to these two. I'll take this out because variables there. Okay, so it tells you that the solution for x and y are these two here. Now there are times when you want to solve some equations which and uh, you find that some equations cannot be solved algebraically. So here I have an equation ln x is equal to e to the power x minus 5. If you try to do this with pen and paper you'd realize it's not possible to solve this algebraically. So in this case you might want to, uh, you'd probably use some, uh, some numerical method say the newton raphson method or some other numerical method. And on Mathematica, if I try to use solve and give this function, and just notice that in Mathematica, ln is written as log. So log here is to the base e. Okay, and if I try to solve this, it gives me an error message, and it says it because to be solved in a non-algebraic way, and returns the same uh, function as the answer. So in this case, you may want to try using a numerical method and the command is called find root okay okay it's called find root okay just notice that the f and r are both uppercase and then open bracket and then type the equation just as you would do for solve so I got log x and then a double equal sign equal to e to the power x minus 5 and with most numerical methods you always start at some arbitrary point you have a starting value so you need to mention what your starting value is so let's say I'll just give x comma 3 okay so what this tells you uh, Mathematica is that the variable is x and I want to try and find a solution around the point where x is equal to 3. Okay, close that bracket and solve. Okay, so this terms tells me that x equals 1.711 is a solution to this equation. Okay, now what math so let's what we'll do is let's look at a graph of ln x and e to the x minus 5. So I've already plotted that here. Okay, so this here, the blue graph is the graph of ln x. The purple graph is the one of e to the x minus 5. And we can see it intersects around the point where x is equal to 1.711 as given by find root. But if we look closely at this point here, around the point 0 0.1, something like that, that is also a solution. So what find root will do is it will only give you one solution. And since this solution here is closer to 3, and I said start at the point where it's 3, it'll give me the solution that's closest to the starting point. So if I want to find out what this solution here is, I changing, change my starting value. So let's say start at the point x equals 0 0.5, shift enter. So then it tells me that the solu one possible solution is that x is equal to 0 0.018. Okay, and since this solution is closer to 0 0.5, it gave me this one instead of the 1.7. Okay, so and finally, let's have a quick look at this reduce function as well. So let's see, you want to solve this equation. Sine x is equal to 0 0.5. Now, you could do this with the solve function. So if I was to say solve, solve sine of x, is equal to 0 0.5 and I'm going to solve for x okay and it would give you one solution okay and I'll actually put this as a half okay so in this case 
if I try to solve sine x equals half, it does give you one solution. We know if sine x is equal to half, x is equal to 30 degrees or in red. So in mathematics, a sine, cos and tan are always given in uh, radians. So x equals pi over 6 is 30 degrees. Now it gives you an error here or it gives you an error message or a warning message that says that inverse functions are being used and that not all solutions may be given. And the reason for this error is this is not the only solution. We know for the sine graph it has infinite solutions. I made a very quick plot here. So the blue graph is the graph of sine x and the purple line is the line uh, y equals 0 0.5. Okay, and the pi over 6 is this value here. So the x coordinate at this point here that's x equals pi over 6, but we can see that there are many more solutions. And in fact, for this, there are infinite solutions. So this is a case where you'd want to use the, if you want all possible solutions, if you want to know what all possible solutions are, then you could use the reduce function. So instead of solve, just type in reduce. Okay, and if I hit shift enter now, so now it tells me that x is equal to, if you look at this one here, it tells me that x is equal to pi over 6 plus 2 pi c1. c1 is a constant and the first part of the solution it tells you that c1 is the subset of all integers. So that's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so x is equal to pi over 6. Plus, so it's kind of like saying x is equal to pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. And the other solution so this solution here is that point that point that point and so on and 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi c1 is that point there that point there that point there and so on